Today we are pleased to focus on one of the central objectives of AFIAS, the concept and organization of safe spaces. But let me first tell you a bit more about OFIAS project. OFIAS stands for Offline and Online Radicalization Prevention, Holding Back Extremism and Upholding Security. And the key word here in uh, dark pink is prevention. So we focus on prevention. Uh, we, uh, we are with eight partners from uh, different countries, from Belgium, the Netherlands, France and the United Kingdom. There are two local governments, City of Mechelen, Portsmouth City Council, two social organizations, Greta Grand Littoral from France and Contour de Twerren slash Ernude from the Netherlands, and four knowledge partners, CPIA, University of Portsmouth, Achterveld University of Applied Sciences in Ghent and University College Roosevelt. The main objectives of our project are Orpheus will provide safe spaces for vulnerable young people to express their grievances, online safety for young people to protect them from online grooming and guidance and policy recommendations. Today we present the concept and practical organization of safe spaces. A safe space is where young people can meet, discuss sensitive topics, assisted by professionals they trust. Young people are also supported to express their grievances publicly. And the main focus here is, the main objective really is building connection and building belonging. Not only among each other, but also with society as a whole. Due to the pandemic, most gatherings with young people were cancelled. And although project partners were able to organize some safe spaces, we started experimenting with online safe spaces. And the main questions are here, are both methods, online and offline, comparable? Do online safe spaces have the same characteristics as a safe space in real life? These and other questions will be raised today. But before we start, and uh, yeah, we cannot get through meetings, uh, online meetings these days without them. Some house rules. I want to remind you that this event will be recorded and will be made publicly available online on our Orpheus YouTube channel. Please also mute your microphones and switch off your camera. This way make it for people who have less uh, bandwidth uh, easier to follow and it will hopefully <laughs> solve uh, uh, technical problems. Um, if there are questions, please add them uh, in the chat function. Uh, we will uh, come back to them after the presentations. Um, and after the presentation, there is room uh, for other questions, so then you can raise your hand. Okay, my co-hosts of today, uh, they will start with an introduction to local policy and the framework of safe spaces, followed by two accounts uh, on the practical and really real life organization of safe spaces uh, and both online and offline. And uh, I think we ha can start, we don't have a lot of time. So uh, Alderman Lapsir, the floor is yours. And I'm gonna ask Katie to stop presenting my PowerPoint. Thank you, Hilde. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. My name is uh, Abdraman Lapsir, and uh, I work as Elderman for Sports, Youth and Prevention in our beautiful city of Mechelen. With the uh, Orpheus and the safe spaces, we come across the youth and prevention part, where my colleagues try to find ways for our youth to feel safe and at home in our city. That you are meeting each other today is very important for me because our youth knows the best what works for them. We still have a lot of challenges such as a shortage of safe spaces or reliable uh, environments within existing organizations. In a safe space, young people, including those who are struggling with alliance, can uh, tell their story and look for uh, solutions. There is also a shortage for training, 
for professional organizations and they need also these safe spaces. These safe spaces can take many forms, thematically, group discussions, actions, individual guidance, conversation during activities, and so on. There is also a lack of knowledge for professionals and young people who have complex questions and frustrations about geopolitic issues, conspiracy theories, ideologies, fake news, and so on. When social frustration come with such a jacket, those frustrations remain the essence that professionals have to work with. Yet you have to work with that jacket before you can get to the essence. Skills in uh, politicizing are necessary in our democratic system, but are currently not so obvious to professionals. Responding to social frustrations in times uh, ensures that social frustrations do not lead to annoyance or violence. The safe spaces are very important for young people in Mechelen. It gives them a place where young people feel safe to talk about all possibilities and even difficulties. Topics such as religion, migration, the coronavirus and so on. The Orpheus project adds a lot of value for our city. The project fits perfectly within Mechelen broad prevention policy. Therefore, it's important that we take next steps with Orpheus to create an environment where things like, like this can be um, researched and after that hopefully can be implemented uh, into a practical methodology so we can make an important statement with Mechelen as a pioneer. I wish you a very inspiring day and hope that our experience can continue to reinforce each other in times of polarization. It's very important to continue to emphasize that safe and resilient youth is an enrichment and the most sustainable society model. I'm looking forward also to the results at the end of the project at the end of 2022. And I thank you all. I thank you, uh, Elder Malbatsi. Uh, I think you can uh, go to uh, Werner, who will uh, line out the framework of safe spaces within Orpheus project. Yes. Um... Thank you very much, Hilden. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Lapsir, um, for your wonderful introduction. Um, I will try and share my screen and show you a small PowerPoint. Um, I hope everybody can see this. Yes. OK. Um, as we are talking about safe spaces and the practice that we are going to um, present today for you, um, it doesn't come out of the blue. It has some sort of an idea behind it um, that the uh, partners in Orpheus tried to develop and try to use um, to um, give young people a safe place where they can as Hilde already said, and as Mr. Uh, Lapsir already said, a place where they can be young um, and express their feelings about what is going wrong in the world without any fear of uh, the consequences that are uh, involved. So I think as safe space, the concept of safe space, of a framework of safe space, I think everybody can relate to uh, what it should be or can be. Um, before starting into the Orpheus uh, safe space ideas, um, in preparing this workshop or, or this presentation, I asked myself, what can be a safe space for me, for us, and where can everybody relate to? Um, and I think that everybody, also people at work um, in an office, uh, need to feel comfortable at a certain time um, to express feelings, frustrations, 
of what the management has decided or what the policy makers have decided and to, to give without any fear of consequences on how to express your idea. Um, talk with colleagues, with co-workers, uh, with people at an equal uh, level uh, in a dialogue. Um, so if coffee machines could talk, I am sure that they uh, can tell us a lot of um, what's really on the mind of um, employees, of what's really on the mind of uh, people who work in a certain organization. But it's valuable information. It can be information to improve the work, to improve the organization, the growth of the organization, but also information on how to have happy people working in an organization, how what should be done for people to feel good in this organization, to commit, to be involved, to engage themselves in the work. Um, even if it would be on a voluntary basis, um, they still will continue to work. So that's uh, that's important. And this image of coffee machines, um, and of course also the, the vending machines, the snacks, uh, not to forget, are very important safe spaces for people in an organization. Um, what does it mean for Orpheus? Or what have we done in Orpheus projects um, to define safe spaces? Um, it's this, um, and I'm very thankful for the partners of Artevelde uh, Hogeschool and all the other uh, knowledge institutions who helped defining this uh, in, uh, definition of a safe space in um, an information paper that we have uh, read uh, um, or made. Um, for Orpheus. I'm going to read it. I know it can be boring in a presentation to read what's on the screen, but I think it's important just to set the minds and to be and to uh, to pick on on what we are, are doing. So a safe space is a location where young people can meet each other, supported by professionals they trust. Um, delicate topics can be addressed comfortably. Young people are even stimulated to engage in uh, social institutions and they are supported in the public expression of grievances. Um, and we should organize or safe spaces should be organized in such a way that they enable us to offer a pedagog pedagogical uh, support um, as opposed to a disproportional repressive action. Of course, this definition also is, uh, is written in the, the light of the, the topic of Orpheus, where you have polarization, extremism, radicalization, and so on, as a broader um, topic in which Orpheus was funded by Interreg Uzi's. Is it old wine in new bottles? Because safe spaces are not new. We didn't invent this idea in Orpheus. As I said, it's something that is human. We all need safe spaces. Um, but I, I can imagine we, we can have two types of, 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 of safe spaces. Protective safe spaces that we know that um, we have done for, for decades uh, even, to protect uh, children, to protect youth, uh, youngsters who are in danger. Um, let's say it's institutionalized, it's organized by, um, by adults who know better for the child or for the youngsters what is best for them. Um, to take them sometimes out of their families, out of their um, trust environments and put them in um, organizations where they are or can be educated, re-educated, prepared for real life um, and so on and so on. That can be a type of uh, safe space. It's not a type of safe space that we have in mind in the Orpheus project. Another type of safe space can be um, 100% uh, informal safe space. Um, young people who are claiming public domain uh, without any interference of adults, without any interference of uh, government or police, um, creating their own authentic street culture, um, hanging around, as they say. Um, and you 
it's very difficult to to manage this to to steer this eh? if uh, everybody uh, knows when you are uh, planning to redesign uh, a part of public domain and you um, envisage a place for young people that they can be at this corner um, under the lights and under a camera to hang around. Um, the first thing that happens is young people will not hang around there where you are foreseeing a place to hang around. No, they will search and find their own place. So this whole 100% informal, informal safe space, it exists, but you can't manage this. So the idea in um, Orpheus is to to have this um, approach uh, where you where we will have let's say an internal dimension. Um, we want to uh, create safe spaces that can be organized uh, at a location at a place that feels natural, authentic uh, for young people, where people are coming spontaneously, where you can feel young, can be young. Um, without any fear, so you have it has to be something um, original, authentic uh, for young people. Um, also, the content has to be spot on. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, a content that is um, imposed, like in a school, eh? you have to follow certain courses, even if it not, if it doesn't interest you, you still have to come. Now, the content in these safe spaces have to come from young people, they have to engage and they have to put some things on the agenda them, themselves to facilitate a peer-to-peer -peer dialogue and the skills for professionals, because in our idea, safe spaces are um, also led or organized by professionals, uh, which young people trust. Um, but we want to provide skills for those professionals on how to um, take the maximum, let's say, out of these safe spaces in, uh, in order to um, upscale uh, everything that is uh, happening. One of the important uh, things next to the internal is the external dimension. Um, you can't stay in your safe shelter um, the rest of your life. You should uh, come out of it. You should engage in your social network. You should learn how to express your uh, your ideas, your feelings, uh, your initiatives, your engagements in social institutions in order to change things. Um, and we want in Orpheus through the safe spaces, support young people in expressing their grievances um, outside of the safe shelter where you can, um, can talk. So we want to learn, um, if I may refer to the coffee machine, we want to learn how you can uh, speak with the management in order to change for good things. Um, so what is key? This is the last slide, uh, Hilda. I hope I'm still on time. Um, uh, key in safe space is that it's not defined what it is, where it should be, and, and, and how you should organize it, um, but more go for, for why do you do it? Why do we want to do this? Uh, it's this uh, pedagogical um, uh, behind the safe spaces that is important um, and where you should start with. Uh, why are we uh, doing this? Um, Key features are safe spaces are uh, places where young people can experiment with a lot of uh, things, a lot of identities, a lot of uh, ideas, opinions, um, and so on, because they are in charge in this way that they set the agenda. Um, they express their needs and grievances, um, not the needs and grievances that are uh, imposed by, uh, by others, uh, and where they of course, have to take up responsibilities or learn to take up uh, uh, responsibilities and uh, eventually engage in actual local political uh, context uh, to um, make their voices count and make their voices taken into account so things can um, be um, altered, changed um, for the better in uh, this local context.
So one of the questions should be also, I think it's something I added uh, personally, and we can certainly discuss uh, later on, is are we letting to let go our sense of control? Uh, because of course, I said Orpheus is about uh, polarization, extremism, radicalization, and that kind of thing. So that's the, the baseline, let's say, where the, the funding came from. Um, traditionally, of course, we try to control all these things. And um, as you might have heard in my uh, presentation, safe spaces are turning things around and letting go a bit of this uh control so that's uh, that's an important thing to 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 have uh, in mind and to uh be aware of that um, um we can't control everything um, and we have to learn and be uh comfortable with uh, that so this is a bit uh, what i wanted to um present and and give uh, as an input into this uh, this webinar um of course safe spaces hilda said it it's uh it's experimenting nothing is written in stone um this is how we are trying to shape uh safe spaces in the orpheus project but of course um, we are open for discussion and really want to learn what it can be so that's why i'm very happy that we can shift to questions is for later, so I will uh, stop this, um, shift to the real practices of what are safe spaces and not just a theoretical um, framework. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Werner, uh, for this uh, very interesting uh, introduction uh, and, and raising important questions. Uh, why? <laughs> why do we do safe spaces? Uh, and really, um, Maybe connected to this, uh, what's the impact, uh, not only on, on policy, uh, but mainly on young people themselves? Uh, and how do we handle uh, our sense, our, our need to control and let control go, really? So, um, no, and it's, it's uh, directly linked uh, on what we're going to hear uh, next. It's uh, um, Martine van Gool of Renewed, of Renewed, um, from the city of Dordrecht. Um, and she and some of her colleagues, some of her members of the youth organization will present their experiences uh, with safe spaces. Um, so I think, uh, Martina, if you and your colleagues could put on your camera, um, the floor is again yours, please. Thank you, uh, Hilda, for this introduction. Um, as said, my name is Martina. I work at Renew, the youth organization in Dordrecht. Um, I, uh, there's been a lot of uh, theoretics about what safe spaces are already. Um, so I'm just going to introduce to you Revolt. Um, for the people who don't know yet, um, this was the online space that we provided for a lot of youth um, where um, they could talk about whatever was on their mind. We've talked about um, politics, but also we had a lot of um, other parties come to our meetings to present uh, their problems for the youth to discuss. Um, and I brought with me uh, Lomba today. Um, also, Quinty was going to be here, but she called in sick, unfortunately. Um, and as a lot of professionals have already talked about safe spaces, I really want to give the floor to Lomba, who's uh, been in our uh, group, and I think she can express what Revolt is better than I could. Okay, hi everyone. First, I want to uh, want to say that my English is not that well, but I will try to uh, speak to you. Um, yeah, I am part of Revolt now. Uh, about a year I think and yeah first I thought uh, that it will will be very strict and um, there would be um, yeah who say regels but regels yeah so uh, <laughs> but that isn't so you can express yourself how you want to you can talk uh, with with, um, for example, M Martina, but uh, also other uh, people who, um, 
yeah, who are there for you and you are free to talk about everything that comes into your mind. And that's why I uh, like it very much um, to be uh, part of a revolt. And I think that uh, many countries uh, should start to, to do safe spaces. Um, a revolt is an example of a sort of a sp safe space but it isn't called uh, a safe space, but yeah, it is uh, a little bit like that. I don't know what to say uh, for the rest, so. What is the most memorable thing we did uh, in Revolt? Um, so i am uh, always been uh, into politics and I like to express myself. So one thing that I will not forget uh, so soon is that um, we all expressed all, uh, our ideas about what we would do if we had our own uh, political party. So that I, yeah, I was very interested to hear from everyone what they would do and everyone listened uh, also to me what i would do if i had, had my own uh, political party and that's something i would never forget i think because that was uh, fun and uh, interesting yeah so uh, i think that is uh, in short what uh, what we do in revolt and uh, yeah thank you for listening listening Thank you, uh, Lomba. Um, I wish uh, Quinty was here to tell also about her experience, but um, I think you explained it very well. Thank you. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you, Martina. This was a first introduction uh, into uh, um, and the voice of a young person about uh, what safe space meant to them. I think there will be uh, some questions uh, after the second presentation uh, of uh, Youssef Naimi. Um, and yeah, I propose to bring all the questions together then. Um, so, Youssef, please take the floor. Yes, <clears throat> good uh, morning, everybody. Um, welcome uh, to this uh, webinar about online safe spaces. My name is Yusuf Naimi. Uh, I work for the NGO CPIRE, and I'm going to give some, um, going to share some experiences and uh, insights about organizing online safe spaces, uh, what they are, um, how they work, uh, what the challenges, but also the benefits, the advantages and the disadvantages of online safe spaces are. Um, and I have an elaboration that I want to share with you, but I thought it would be more interesting uh, to see what your starting point of view is about online safe spaces. What do you think about online safe spaces? Do you think they are a necessary evil because there was a lockdown and that was the end of it? Uh, do you think they work um, as a true safe space uh, or not? And I thought for that it would be a bit um, easier and also a bit, you know, a bit more fun if we um, have an exercise, a Mentimeter exercise. So in the chat, I will share with you the link and the code uh, that you have to go to. Um, it's, it's, let me share right now, one second. There we go. I have two questions prepared for everybody here and they are on the Mentimeter website. So it would be um, if you could take your smartphone or on the computer or the laptop that you are right now uh, following this presentation on. And if you go to uh, www.menti.com and you use the code, 
you will be presented with a question. I actually have two questions prepared for everybody. And I just want to see what your initial perception is of online safe space, because that is what our focus will be on the online aspect. Now, um, I want to give a, a, a very uh, quick elaboration on the first question uh, or premise as such, because it is actually a premise, so that you understand what I mean by it. Uh, the first premise that I have, and I will see if I can share my screen. Maybe it's a bit easier if I can. Uh, let's see. One question. All right. Uh, let's see. Can I share it? If Teams works with me, that would be great. Uh, I already see that two people have already answered. I was going to give a quick elaboration, but that's not a problem. Let me just quick elaborate what I mean by the premise first and foremost, so that people understand what I mean. Um, we, we all have heard the sentence that we are right now in this modern age more connected than ever, but still feel more lonely than ever. And so in that aspect, I wanted to ask the crowd, do you think that online safe space have the same dichotomy or the same problem that yes, they cause uh, they will create more connection between uh, people on a digital level, but will actually cause more loneliness and more alienation because instead of bringing young people together in a real location, in a real safe space, you once again push them to the uh, abstract online world and make them uh, more alienated from themselves because it's all it's all digital. We, we could be more or less anonymous in the dig digital world and there will be no true uh, uh, connection uh, in a safe space. Is there anyone who has that kind of worry? I see most answers already coming in uh, and eight people are saying that uh, online safe spaces will, uh, on the premise of that online safe spaces will cause alienation rather than connection. I think everybody has said not true. Um, two people have said not sure. Um, so it would have been great if, if someone said true because then obviously they would have uh, an interesting difference of opinion on this matter. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So I see 13 people have uh, replied not true and two persons have replied not sure. Um, it would be interesting for me uh, to ask the person that have said not sure because obviously the person said it is not true. I can easily understand that. But for those people who said not sure, uh, who were the ones who said not sure? Could, could you perhaps raise your hand uh, via Teams, and I can could uh, let you have the word. Um, Werner, why did you choose not sure? Um, because as you, uh, because I'm not not sure <laughs> that it's, it's it can be a safe space. But also, maybe because I'm uh, uh, 40 plus and not a youngster, uh, that can maybe uh, be some part of uh, explanation. Um, but I think it's it's lacking a bit. The as you mentioned, uh, use of the the human interaction, um, flesh and blood, uh, and to be uh, really, um, yeah, connecting to other people it's uh, right. for me therefore not sure that this digital environment can uh... maybe a quick question on, on that one hypothetically speaking um is an online safe space always a plan b always a plan b hypothetically speaking if we if we're sure that 10 people will show up is an online safe space then always option b and never option a um Maybe, yes, uh, but better a safe space and better online than not a safe space. And, and um, not yeah. So maybe, yeah, it's for me more plan B than uh, plan A. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, Anna. Let me see. Uh, Toby. Baldari, Toby? Yes. Are you also I not sure? Yeah, I think, I, uh, in my opinion, the um, the question is a bit too too much simplified. 
I think it's a lot, a lot more complex than just saying, okay, it is not safe. Uh, just because it's about uh, it's about emotions, about feelings, it's about um, feeling feeling safe, and that's not something that you can just uh, conceptualize. And okay, online is not safe, and offline is safe. I think it's it's too simple. Uh, it's too simple to say that or to ask that question. There are a lot more different aspects on that on that uh, on that matter. So. So, so I presume, Toby, that you do not agree with, with the premise that an online safe space is always plan B and never plan A. I, pre I presume that you do not agree with that. Uh, no, I think I think there should not be the discussion on plan B or plan A should not be on the table. There should be on the table how are we... Um, how we are how are we outreaching to the youth at this moment and what is working right and if plan a is working then we choose plan a and if plan b is working we choose plan b but it's not that there is a hierarchy in plan b is a is better or plan b is better it's just let's see what works and put our money on that so, so to speak very quickly and i'll i'll, I'll finish uh, um, uh Toby, that is what I asked Werner, that hypothetically speaking, Toby, if you're sure you can reach 10 young people that will be present, hypothetically speaking, would you always prefer an offline safe space than an online? If you know 10 people will be present, no matter what, would you always say, well, in that case, if I know 10 people will definitely be present, then I will always get, uh, take an offline safe space instead of an online? Uh, no. No, I, I think it again. It's it's a bit too simple. I think it's if there is no no, if something works for ten people, or then then it's then let's let's choose individually what works for every person. So um, I think that's the important thing to look at. And it's not only for the for the young person that it should work. It's also for the person that is assisting or wants to. Uh, wants to provide help in some sort of way that needs to work. So the, the connection needs to be authentic and needs to be uh, safe. And the, if the connection is safe, to me, it doesn't matter if it's online or offline. If you get if you get what I... Definitely, what definitely. Thank you very much, Sobi. Thank you so much. I have one more question for everybody, and I'll uh, click on it now. And I think uh, most of you have already answered the second question as well. Uh, the second question or the second premise was online safe spaces cannot guarantee real safety because it is online. And I see that here there's a more uh, split opinion. So the, 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 the meaning or the, the idea behind this premise was that, well, in the online world, we never really know who we're talking to. And thus, if we don't know who we're talking to, then I, I cannot be in a safe space because to be in a safe space means uh, one of the things that means is that I know where I am and who I am talking to and whether or not me giving an answer is going to put me in some kind of threat or danger or whatsoever. And online, you never have that real safe safety uh, because because it is online. Um, I have a question uh, for those. I see that three people have uh, replied saying it is true that they agree with the premise that it cannot be, uh, cannot guarantee uh, safety. Six people said not true, and one person said not sure. I have, um, my question is for those, maybe you can raise your hand as well, for those who said true, for those that agreed that online safe spaces cannot guarantee real safety because it is online. Could you perhaps elaborate on that? Um, a, a short elaboration. Uh, Ilias Maraha, you chose true for the premise? Yes, um, because I think, um, like I, like I said, the online, the offline world is, is just one one big world. But um, to guarantee the safety and, and to talk on on real topics that that are very close to uh, to youngsters, mm -hmm. and um, actually have in mind that the information that they share uh, will be seen by other youngsters. Maybe they know them, maybe they don't know them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it can be um, a very um, um, 
unsafe way how to express your feelings because you don't know who's uh, who's the other one. So the introduction must be way more uh, in depth so that the youngsters actually know what the information they will share there, what's going to be afterwards. Will that follow them in other chat rooms, other forums? Uh, will that be a friend of a friend they don't know online? So the the the, dig the digital well-being is is, is way more um, uh, precur, and you have to put a lot more energy to to gain the trust. So I, I really think that um, gathering a group of youngsters that certainly do not know each other online will be more yeah, uh, difficult to uh, to engage them all. So that's my point of view on that. Do you think, Elias, that an online safe space can still be held responsibly with with minors, or do you or do you think that online safe spaces, because of the danger that we that you just presented, uh, should preferably be held with 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 adults, because then we're dealing with adults and there's uh, mm -hmm. what do you think? It can, it can be done with, with youngsters also. I think uh, if the topic is uh, is correct, um, I will. Give you an, an anecdote that I, I use a lot. Um, we tell our children, do not trust people online that you don't know, don't know in real life, especially uh, older uh, people who are trying to talk about you about, let's say, a topic sexual uh, orientation and so on. We teach the children, do not do that. Otherwise, uh, if you take that topic to to uh, to talk about it in in a safe space, yeah. Um, I really want them to uh, get their parents together uh, to, to tell them their parents about about that one. If you're uh, I'm, I'm not minor anymore, if you're if you're 18 plus, you can make your own choices. So depending on the topic, you, yes, you can have um, really in-depth talks with, with youngsters um, if it's okay. And I think um, um, to talk about newer media, for example, now on, on violence and squid games, uh, the, the, the big Netflix uh, hit. Yeah, if, if there are 12 years, 13 years, 14 years uh, that are looking to the squid games, yeah, for me as a youth work, you can engage online because they, they consume uh, also that kind of uh, scenes online. You can talk about that in an online environment. But regarding other topics like sexting and so on, it should be more um not thought of and also with um consent of the parents of course uh, if they're a minor that's my point of view right right in inter interesting because the obviously we, we we sometimes have youngsters that attend safe spaces uh about which their parents do not do not know that they attend them because sometimes the parents do not agree with the content of of of, of, of what is discussed in the safe space so you can see how that becomes a challenge on how do we get consent from parents if exactly the youngsters are fleeing away, not literally, but you know, fleeing away the, the dichotomy of the home because they want to attend a safe space about which their parents would say, well, you cannot attend that because I, because I disagree with the content. But uh, definitely interesting point of view, Elias. Thank you very much. Um, Lamba, Nesha? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I wanted to say that I think that maybe some people uh, like the idea of not knowing the people who you are talking to um, because you can feel safer with people that don't know you mm -hmm. uh, than people then who know you um, your whole life. So right. maybe it, it would feel safer and nicer for uh, those uh, people with problems mm -hmm. to talk to people they don't know. Right. Because uh, there are perhaps less um, consequences of saying something to someone you don't know because they have they can they, they cannot do something yeah. with information. Yeah, indeed, I think that that's um, how you're saying that that that's what I mean. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, interesting, interesting. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if there was anybody else because there were three persons who agreed with the premise that that, that it cannot guarantee it. Um, but I'm not sure if someone else wanted to share something. Uh, if not, then I presume we uh, can go on with the presentation that we'll try to share right now. Hopefully it will work. Let's see. Um, one second. Go.
So my question is, can you see the PowerPoint or not? Because I'm not sure if I... Yes, we can. Okay, great. Let me just make this a full screen. So I'm just going to give a quick uh, summary about our experiences with online safe spaces, what the advantages were, what the disadvantages could be, uh, and some examples of the online safe spaces that we, and by we, I mean CPI, uh, together with other partners, organized. Um, of course, first and foremost, the whole notion of online safe spaces came to be in the notion of the lockdown uh, with the pandemic and a lot of youngsters being uh, alienated in a literal sense of way from the rest of society and not able to participate, especially in the first months when everything was uh, terminated and every every kind of uh, participation in even in youth centers could not happen. And thus the need for talk, for discussion uh, uh, was, uh, was a reality. That, that need was really there, especially once the pandemic started to uh, evolve. Uh, um, as well as the conspiracy theories about the pandemic start to evolve. And the polarization started to, to evolve as well as who is the guilty ones, who has put us in this very difficult situation, who can we look at? And of course, as usual, when there is a, a major problem in society and you're looking for the for the evil people, for the bad doers, uh, you, you usually end up with the same type of people. And, and, and thus this affects young people as well because they are part of that whole discussion. And so we felt there is a tremendous need for a safe space, but in this case it has to be online, online safe space, to, to have these discussions, to say, okay, how, how are you dealing with these restrictions? But not only the restrictions, but also how are you dealing with this new type of polarization? Where society is looking for, you know, for the evil doers, you know, how how has that impacted you? So we've created different types of safe spaces. We've invited different type of uh, speakers and experts on different types of topics, and based on that, we have experienced for ourselves some advantages to the creation of these online safe spaces. Uh, whereby they can still be uh, fruitful and useful uh, uh, after the after the whole pandemic uh, comes to an end. Uh, what are some aspects of these advantages that we experience with the safe spaces? Well, first and foremost, it might seem very obvious, but it is still true, uh, is that um, for youngsters, well, they were at home anyway, so it was easier to participate from home. But this could be an advantage, an advantage that, that always remains true because, um, because of time reasons, because of logistic reasons, because of, uh, as you see in the second point, whether or not you are allowed to go outside, are you allowed to go outside in the Is evening? It? Yes. Sorry, we can't see your slides. You're still in the first slide. Do you want me to share your PowerPoint? Oh. Uh, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I minimize my screen. Do you want me to share it and you can take over control? Uh, Katie, I hear a lot of people in the back. Not Sorry. Sure, who I'm hearing. Um, uh, yeah, if you can share it, Katie, that would be fine. Uh, I, I presume I'll have to stop the presentation. Sorry, let's see. Katie? Yes, let's try this. Can you take um, over control? I think I can, yes, thank you very much. Great, I think everybody can see this, so we can carry on where I was. As I was saying, people, so there are some uh, clear advantages of organizing a safe space. Uh, for a lot of youngsters, of course, it is easier to participate because it is from home and this allowed us to uh, um, have um, safe spaces uh, in the mid middle of the week, which is not always uh, very easy uh, for a lot of young people because of school, uh, because most safe spaces, the off offline safe spaces that we have organized in the past have almost always been in the weekend, uh, unless we were uh, dealing with, an, with, with adults. Uh, but the creation of all online safe spaces, because it is easy from home when they're done with their homework, they just take their smartphone and they can participate and they're there for an hour or half an hour or has all, 
as long as they want to, because obviously they are not reliable on getting there on time or getting back at home at time. So it is uh, it, it really lowers the threshold of participating in a safe space tremendously in that aspect. You know, it's very easy accessible. And also because a lot of youngsters perhaps sometimes feel, well, if I'm there and I don't like it, it's kind of rude to just leave and people will look at me. Uh, well, if I'm online participating and for, what, for whatever reason, I don't feel safe in the safe space. I do not like the content, or I, I do not like the discussion, whatever the reason might be, I just click out and I'm gone. So that is a very interesting way of participating in safe spaces where it is, it allows you to come quickly in and out. Obviously, it creates some challenges for the moderating aspect, but for the participate participator, that is very interesting. Um, so connected to that, as I preluded to earlier, the second point, uh, going outside, especially with uh, in in in, uh, in some neighborhoods, in, uh, in 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 some cultures, you know, let, let's let's be really frank about it. In some cultures about it, um, and in, in with some conservative parents, uh, they might be quite hesitant to let um, some of their children, sometimes some of their daughters, to uh, to 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 go outside in in. in uh, in, in in to a place that they might not know. Parents are not always up to up to date about who, who are these youth organizations, what are they doing there, what are they saying there, where are you going, and not only that, you're going out late outside. I do not trust parents might trust youth organization, but might not trust the neighborhood where it is held. Um, and those might be limiting factors for the parents to allow the children to uh, participate in an online uh, in an offline safe space. Obviously, with the online aspect, you have you do not have that difficulty. Um, as I, I forgot her name, but as uh, Lama, yes, Lama Michel earlier said, an anonymity can actually be an advantage because you can say things that you might not be willing uh, to say if it is in an online, offline safe space because everybody knows who you are, uh, everyone knows how you look like, and thus an online safe space where you perhaps turn your camera off, then you can participate, you can share your experiences, you can share your grievances, because it's not only about experiences, but sometimes about grievances, what has made you upset, what has made you uh, filled with anger. Uh, maybe it is easier to say that if nobody knows who you are, because otherwise you might be afraid of what are the consequences. You know, are the uh, security services are going to come uh, to, to pick me up if I say something that has caused me anger? So an uh, anonymity is actually a po possible advantage because it lowers uh, the uh, the threshold on, on on sharing some things without people uh, with, without people knowing who the person is that shared it. Um, what is another advantage in an online safe space um, is that you have different lanes of communication and that might seem weird to have as an advantage but it is because in an offline safe space when people are, uh, are, are, are talking to each other obviously it creates chaos and it's very difficult to manage that in an online safe space it is interesting to have a, a major discussion uh, between the moderator and the expert and, and another participant of the of safe space for example but in between, you see people interacting with each other. So it allows different layers of communication between the participants of the safe space. And it, it's easier for some participants to have that lane of communication instead of raising their hand in the middle of the crowd, raising attention for themselves in a crowd of 20, 30 people where everybody now turns their head and looks at them. Um, this layers of communication allows it for them to um, uh, to participate uh, easier. I'm I'm not sure exactly what's happening. I see the I see the slides turning quite a lot. Uh, I'm not sure who's doing that quite exactly. Yeah, and of course uh, the last uh, point of advance of an online safe space is that it creates a potential wider audience because in an offline safe space you are quite limited most of the time. Uh, in, in the young people that you know directly, they know where your organization is, they know how to get there, they know who they're supposed to uh, see um, and, and expect. And of course, in an online, in an online safe space, you create this event online, you share it to the different social media, and you can decide that it is open for everybody and it is, all, it is uh, uh, accessible for everybody in a real 
in a real tangible way. Uh, for example, if I don't know an organization, but they're organizing the safe space, but an online way, it's just one click away and I'm there. Instead of going to a building I don't know, going to seeing people I don't know, um, obviously it creates the possibility of really broadening your uh, audience uh, that perhaps in a later phase can join your offline safe space. Good. Uh, So, having said that, of course, there are some disadvantages of organizing a safe space or possible disadvantages, I should say. What are these disadvantages of organizing a safe space? Um, well, obviously, first and foremost, home is not necessarily safe space, which might sound weird, but um, um, as you can see, certain topics could be a taboo at home. So, uh, some young people will... Uh, consciously leave their home and go to this offline safe space, another location, another building with other people, because they know that certain topics cannot be discussed at home without some, uh, perhaps some severe consequences or rebuttal uh, fr from the parents, from the brother, from the sister, because it is deemed as irrespectable or not, not okay to discuss these topics. Or perhaps some young people would like to share something, but their family members might disagree on that which is being uh, discussed or shared. Um, Katie, I don't know exactly what happened, but suddenly... I also the... don't know what happened. <laughs> Give me a second. No problem. No problem. So uh, wh while Katie tries to bring back the presentation, I'll just carry on about... So what you should be very careful when you're organizing a safe space, an online safe space uh, at home. Uh, as to ask yourself, well, this topic, is this something where young people can really freely talk about? For example, the topic of uh, sexuality. In certain households, uh, parents are, especially when you're dealing with minors, parents are uh, frown upon discussing sexuality because they deem it is unnecessary because their child is still too young to talk about it. And especially when you're talking for, let, let's take some cliche examples when you're talking about um, LGBTQ matters, or if you're talking that in certain households, in, in certain parts of our society, uh, they frown upon this and thus hope it's not necessarily a safe space. And so that might make those type of discussions tricky. And that's why I said the advantage is that you have the different layers of communication because perhaps they can share something without actually having to uh, speak it out and they can just write it down in the chat. And that's all, that, that is an advantage, of course. Um, another possible disadvantage is that online safe space might attract more girls or boys, um, depending on the topics. For example, another, one of the examples you will see later on is that we organized an esports uh, safe space, which is a uh, 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 competitive uh, video game sports online it was a, a, a tournament and we invited people and then we talked about the latest happenings what is going in their life how are they dealing with alienation with the pandemic the lockdown etc etc obviously uh, this type of event was quite popular with the boys because it was a, a video game um, a, a, a sport video game but we had no girls whatsoever at all so sometimes some types of safe spaces that are really hot and attractive will only attract one type of crowd. And so you have to think about how can I diversify my types of safe space. But of course, uh, we, we, we don't want to fall in, in cliches because we were thinking about this. All right, how can we attract a safe space for only girls, you know, and, and make it like unique? And, and You know, as someone said, uh, without thinking too much, too far about this, like, all right, maybe we, we can create a cooking safe space. And then, yeah, but the idea was like, yeah, but are we then creating stereotypes? Uh, boys can do the uh, sports safe space and girls can do the cooking. So we don't want to fall into that trap again. So you have to be sensitive about the type of online safe space that might attract more of one crowd than, than the other. Um, I said earlier that anonymity can be uh, can be an advantage because people can feel more safe uh, being online. But of course, the problem the problem of anonymity is that it also can be a danger, especially when you're dealing with minors and you might have adults in the room who do not show their camera. Uh, you uh, and 
you can all already, uh, you know, you can already imagine to what possible problem that that can lead to. So anonymity, and this is something that the, the organization, the moderator has to think very good about this. But do I ma mandate a camera for, for the participants or not? Do I want to be able to see everybody to, to make sure that they are who they are? If we're talking about the topic of sexuality with a group of minors, uh, but I, I cannot see some people. Um, is is that safe or not? Is that a safe space or not? Um, uh, do I mandate a type of registration to make sure I know who I am, uh, who is in the crowd? What if I have ten minors in the crowd or one adult who might have not the best intentions in the world? Uh, am I uh, creating a, uh, an unsafe space instead of a safe space? So these are the possible disadvantages of an online safety. So which you should think quite thoroughly about. Uh, and the next point might seem a bit, uh, well, unlikely for some because it is seen as so evident that everybody has a smartphone. But of course, you have technical and financial obstacles in creating online safe spaces. Um, you presume that everybody has the necessary equipment, such as a smartphone or a decent working computer, internet at home, which everybody presumes that uh, everybody in, in, in these countries have. Well, obviously, that is not true. We still have households of uh, low income where uh, internet at home is not always uh, a given. Um, the same for a smartphone. You know, not all uh, people have access to a decent working smartphone, um, especially when you're dealing with minors. Perhaps a, a parents do not want their child to have a smartphone yet. And thus, you have to uh, think about that aspect as well. Will I be able to reach the, my audience um, um, despite these obstacles? Um, and then the last aspect of, um, of disadvantages that I have written down here is, um, I said earlier, you have a great advantage in having different layers of communication. A possible disadvantage is that you have a greater challenge in maintaining structure, uh, the house rules of the session, because you have different people talking to each other, uh, taking the mic, uh, writing, uh, uh, um, perhaps interesting discussions in the chat, because we experienced that, that we were leading as a moderator, a discussion with an expert and a participant, but other people were having side discussions in the chat. And, and again, that, that's a possible advantage. But you, of course, create, uh, the online uh, safe space creates more of a, uh, a structural hassle in the sense you are expected to, to uh, keep uh, uh, watch of different layers of communication. And sometimes you need more than one person, you three or three, uh, two or three persons to keep, uh, to make sure that the whole event is still a safe space, that not something is being said in the chat that is creating a toxic, a toxic level uh, in, in, in your, uh, in your discussion, in your group discussion. So it does create some challenge uh, and uh, it, it, it requires more than one person to manage the, the, the event. Whereas in an offline safe space, of course, you can just attract attention very easily. You can see who's, who's talking, who's talking to who, and online is a bit different. Good. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the next one. Some various aspect of online safe spaces. Uh, as I said earlier, um, what is interesting is to think about when you're organizing online safe spaces, whether or not there's going to be a connection between online and offline safe spaces. Are these different types of events? Uh, because obviously when you create safe spaces and you create a discussion and you make think, people think about it, it does not, the, 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 the thinking does not end when you end your safe space. So people still carry it on. In an offline safe spaces, what happens most of the times, organizations create series of discussions and they might refer back to it. So you have to think about yourself, well, if I create an online safe space, but next month there is an offline, are they in connection with each other? Do we just forget about it because it was a different crowd? Might not be the same audience as I have in my offline safe spaces. So what is the connection uh, between the online and offline safe space? Are these two types of different events? Or do I try to uh, make a connection between the offline and online uh, safe spaces? Um, the, the staff aspect I also discussed previously, 
that it is very important that you need moderators to lead in discussion, but you also always require people to lead the technical aspects. Uh, uh, as you can see today, <laughs> it can be a challenge for us as well, uh, for managing the presentation, the technical aspects. Perhaps some people have trouble connecting, some people uh, had trouble uh, with the password, some people cannot see if you're using a Mentimeter, a tool, that's just an example of a tool. Uh, so you need different types of people managing that. So you need a real proper staff for the online aspect because sometimes people presume, oh, it's online, it's behind your uh, laptop. You, you can just manage it by yourself and that is not true. You need different, you need the whole staff to manage the online safe space. Um, of course, very interesting uh, with online safe spaces that evaluation can be sent very quickly after the safe spaces because usually uh, there is some type of registration, not always, but usually some type where you have the email address. And that's interesting that you can use in all online safe spaces as soon as that is ended. You send them a very quick email where they can just click on a smartphone within five questions. And it's a bit, perhaps it's a bit more easier than sometimes in offline safe space where you ask people, and what did you think of it? And you get a very broad and vague answer of like, yeah, it was all right, or I don't know. And so uh, the online aspect does create you this tool of quickly sending an evaluation form to see how your audience, uh, what your are thinks of it. Uh, good. And then, Ending is uh, uh, with two examples of online uh, safe spaces that we created. Uh, in the left example that you see, I already uh, talked about earlier, was um, the example of an online safe space that we created during the pandemic lockdown, uh, where we created an esports tournament, uh, FIFA in your cot, which means FIFA in your home, basically. And we created a tournament. We invited a speaker, which is always quite interesting and 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 sometimes even necessary, is that you need a speaker that attracts young people. You might call them an influencer as such. Um, that all, of course, has affinity with the event itself. So we invited someone that you know. Uh, did know the, the game and did play the game himself. So obviously that makes it threshold a bit lower uh, and could play with, with our participants as well. And meanwhile, we could discuss certain types of topics related to the, the, the core event of the safe space. But again, the, the challenge that we saw, as I said earlier, is that we uh, had only boys in this event and, uh, and no girls. Um, and then to the right, uh, another example of a safe space that we created is social injustice. How can I, I'm just going to translate it, how can I contribute in the in the struggle or in the fight against uh, inequality? Uh, with Danila Herman, it's a very famous uh, uh, author and uh, activist in, in Belgium, uh, which was uh, grave as a total different crowd. Most of the participants were young women, um, some women of color, um, but it was it was a bit of a diverse crowd, but a totally different crowd than, than the esports tournament, where it were most of them were young men, young men, young men of color, uh, primarily from the Maghreb uh, uh, area that participate in our event. This was a totally different crowd with different types of views of of uh, uh, different expectations of the safe space as well, because it was more it was more. Uh, where uh, where the safe space was more laid back in the esports tournament in this safe space it was very okay let's talk about this very serious matter because it was ongoing with the protest of black lives matter but uh, there was still there was this whole struggle can we can we participate in a demonstration when there's a lockdown and a pandemic going on uh, is it responsible or not well if it's not responsible then what can we do and how do we do it and do we have to, to have the discussions with people at home now where uh, which we are locked with them in our home because of the pandemic, but do we still have to continue the struggle? So it was a very more serious safe space, but nonetheless a safe space because you still create that safety of having different types of experiences with people with, diff with uh, different views on how to deal with social injustice. Um, and for us, it was... Uh, also, um, an, 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 an insight to know that well, sometimes you you just have to accept that you have different types of crowds, and that's all right. That cre that also creates the same space because uh, to sometimes it can ad have an advantage to have a very diverse crowd, but sometimes, to be honest, that can also be a disadvantage because. Uh, people are expecting in, in some safe spaces to have like-minded people. Uh, 
Um, and in other safe spaces, people come and to share their views, knowing I will not have like-minded people in, in my event. And so, so for us, that was these different types of events were all uh, were all positive, of course. But it is important for the organization to think about: Am I going for one crowd, one type of crowd? Do they have to be diverse? Is that diversity a strength? It could be, but it, it, it is not always. It might actually hurt your safe space because of what people are expecting. Um, in our esports tournament, people were expecting different views. Some were saying, oh, this pandemic is not real. Others saying, oh, of course it is real. And, you know, different views. In, in the aspect of social injustice, we could feel from the crowd that they would not be very tolerable to people who would say, for example, um, um, I don't like black, the Black Lives Matter movement. Or would say statements like, for example, if they would have said statements like, all lives matter. We could very easily assess that that type of uh, diversity, potential diversity in the crowd would have, uh, would have, uh, have a negative harmful impact on, 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 on our safe space. So uh, this is something that organizations should think of. And with that, uh, I, I end my part about some of our experience with the online safe space. I see a question in the chat. I presume we will have to uh, address them later on. But uh, thank you very much. And Hilda, back to you. Thank you, Yusuf. Very interesting. Um, I maybe would like to uh, go to Martina and um, Lamba uh, for a quick, a quick reaction to this presentation. Do they? have the same experiences uh, of some of the advantages uh, of online, offline uh, safe spaces, the disadvantages too? Lomba, do you want to react? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I will try. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, to be honest, I don't have any negative um, experiences with uh, the with the revolt with the online space i only have positive experiences and um the thing that you don't know people um i think that uh, young people uh, of this generation um are not uh, so afraid of that anymore mm -hmm. they are um yeah they they know that it's it's normal for us and uh, so it, it yeah it it automatically you you talk to people and uh, at first i didn't knew um uh, martina as well but i knew her and um i think maybe it is uh, a good idea too that you sometimes have uh, online uh, meetings and other times you see each other um in real life mm. and that's what i'm doing too with revolt uh, sometimes i meet with martin in uh, real life and sometimes it is uh, uh, online in online meetings mm. so the uh, the the variety in that uh, can be uh, good too for for the people if you have uh, that trust uh, trust uh, issues which i don't have and I didn't experience it in the past as well with Revolt and um, not even at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I, I could, if I see, uh, understand correctly, if you have a local organization where you have uh, offline, uh, just uh, live safe spaces, it is easier to have an online safe spaces where you connect about dif different topics and, and uh, discuss different uh, types of um, I don't know, topics. Um, but then again, uh, what Youssef presented here is maybe um, safe spaces that are open for everyone. So it's not locally, people don't know each other, don't know uh, you, maybe Youssef. So that's, yeah, that's a different kind of safe space. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Uh, at, le at least for us, it was also a new experience, and we uh, consciously decided to make it as open for everybody and to see how to, how 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 does that work? And, mm -hmm. uh, and it obviously it did work, but it 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 also thought as a lesson as to be careful in the future as to know certain types of topics 
require a certain type of audience for it to work properly because otherwise <coughs> it might not be a safe space. But uh, as Lambas said, sometimes it is it is perfectly fine to be anonymous as well. Do not know who you're talking to because of, it's a different type of top, a topic. Definitely. And um, if I may react to that, because one thing I'm very proud of um, the the youth of Revolt is doing now is creating a, a very, very big um, offline safe space. They are um, now organizing a very big uh, debating tournament, which is open for everybody. And I think about um, how how many uh, young people will attend uh, Lamba to the debate and discuss um, so, certain topics. Uh, uh, I think with the extra people, mm -hmm. so one team uh, does have uh, five uh, people, and with the extra people, I think around uh, 90, 90, maybe 100, but I think 80, 90, so around that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's much of work, but um, as Martina said, it is for everyone, and we want uh, 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 very diverse people. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's uh, everyone is uh, welcome. And I, um, I think it is like sort of the revolt meetings I am talking about now, not uh, debating anymore. It is a kind of a classroom, but a smart, so small classroom with not much people. So in school you have uh, classrooms with uh, with uh, 30 people, uh, 25. And with uh, Revolt you have uh, six, sometimes uh, maybe eight. But it doesn't matter because you can talk about anything you want and nobody is judging you. Mm -hmm. That's uh, key, yeah? No one is judging you, that you have the safety to talk about topics. Yeah. I like very much the idea what you present now, these um, um, discussions, this open discussion you're organizing, um, because that's even a step further. Eh? That, that's the second part of, of safe spaces, the external dimension, the politicization, getting publicly, uh, speaking publicly, publicly uh, and sharing uh, your, your ideas um grievances maybe even uh with the wider public so uh wow <laughs> <laughs> very nice okay um maybe um also Yusuf uh, of Martina of, of Lamba would like to share something also about uh, this politicization about um policy of local governments policy of uh, bigger organizations why it is important to organize safe spaces, to um, to offer safe spaces to young people? Um, well, we offered two meetings with um, mayors from two uh, different uh, cities, from Dordrecht and from Tilburg, uh, within Rivolt, uh, mainly about what uh, young people think about the uh, corona measure, uh, measures. Um, and I think to create <clears throat> an environment where those two parties can meet each other and uh, discuss. Okay, because um, one of the mayors wasn't very open-minded, mm -hmm. uh, so to say, and uh, really didn't consider uh, the perspective of young people. The other one um, tried to, but didn't really have those conversations or discussions with young people. So when they, when he did, uh, the mayor of Dordrecht. Um, it, he he really um, opened up to the perspective of young people, I think, and really considered this in the next uh, decisions he had to make around uh, the measures. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's very important, uh, yeah. of course, to create. Did you have the same uh, experience, uh, Lamba, with the mayors? Uh Yes, uh, I have. Uh, like Martina said, uh, some older people don't uh, aren't that open-minded, but um, you can learn from uh, that too because you can learn to debate uh, with such uh, people. You can learn to defend yourself in conversations like that. 
So, um, yeah, I think it's in a very much ways you can learn from spaces like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, many times uh, those people come to us. We don't even have to invite them to talk with us. Uh, they uh, they uh, come to us to talk uh, talk with about anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think it is uh, much much advantages. Okay, Yusuf, did you want to add something to this? Yeah, very quickly, I just wanted to share that for us, what made safe spaces so um, necessary, not only relevant, but necessary, is that we are we were primarily focusing of, have been focusing on, on young people who are from a, a part of society that easily gets alienated, that easily does not feel represented uh, in different organizations, institutions, does not feel that uh, their point of view get get a fair share in, in the society and i think that is why safe spaces play such a major role that when you're dealing with people who feel uh, uh, who have these grievances actually because they have a point of view that differs from the dominant uh, culture difference uh, what the established culture says how things should be done or things should look at i think that's why safe spaces are so important but because you give these crowds in our example a lot of these crowds are people uh people of color who participate in our safe spaces because um they they know that they do not find the same type of openness in other organizations uh, or where where their point of view is seen as something other as something weird because they are a minority and they are not part of the majority and it does not only have to do with ethnic uh, aspects to, to be clear because i think today what you see at the other side is that uh uh, is that Caucasian people, let me call it as such, Caucasian people uh, with, with, with a very right point, uh, right wing point of view, do not always feel that they have a safe space to discuss certain type of topics and, and, and that might drive them towards certain types uh, of uh, dark aspects in society, but also in the internet. And I think that's why safe spaces are so, so important that we have a uh, because it's an act of prevention, eh? it's all in line of the prevention work, eh? to, to, to make sure that before things go bad, that, that we can have discussions even with people who have different points of view or point of views that we seem to, or that we deem to be outside of the uh, what is acceptable. Uh, and I think that is why a safe spaces in the line of prevention is so necessary. Okay. Thank and you. Uh, Yusef, if I may ask a question. Um, what is done with the, you have the discussions and is there anything, is there a result of those discussions or is there uh, anything being done with the information you gather? Well, that, that, that really depends on uh, the topic and who you are working with and what their expectations are. Uh, what, what you see sometimes is when you have these discussions uh, in a certain type of organization, for example, and you see there is a type of need for young people to express themselves. For example, one crowd that we worked with and had safe spaces on is um, there were various aspects, uh, cultural and arts that uh, were present in their life, but they've never found a way to express themselves because of their in an example I give because of they were from a minority background and they felt that a at home there was no space for that and and b the society itself did not create this, uh, the space as well uh, for example the schools or the institutions were for these youngsters not a, an appropriate place to express that aspect of arts and culture in their life but they still felt that need and 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 and, and so you create or you, it's easier said than done, but you try to see, okay, what, 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 what can we create? What facilities can we propose to these youngsters where they can come and they can express themselves? And you see a whole different types of organization that exists today. For example, participating partner that we visited during a party meeting bus is, is a very key player of that. Who said, all right, we need to give our, 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 uh, our youngsters uh, the, these expressions of themselves, and I think that is very crucial, is that we help young people in, in a constructive way express <clears throat> themselves. 
And, and that is very as, uh, important of the prevention. But again, I, I have to repeat what I said. It is not only in a, the cliche of, oh yeah, people of color. No, again, you see that a lot of youngsters today, Caucasian people, uh, primarily men, but I presume the same can be for women, uh, young women as well, but uh, primarily young men who do not feel where they can go and express themselves in a constructive way because they are deemed to be outside of the ordinary. And a lot of times with these youngsters, it is just to have to have the space to express themselves. That in and, uh, in and of itself can be can, can be uh, for themselves a, a very as, an important aspect of their identity to feel that in my society I can express myself and they might differ with me, but that's fine. But the society allows me to be who I am. I think that in itself is a very powerful tool. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, we will um, now, I, I propose to now turn to uh, our audience and see uh, if there are questions. Uh, in the chat, not a lot yet, but there's one question uh, from Vas, and it has to do with what we are doing within all fears is experimenting and what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and uh, essential for this is feedback eh, from participants. How do they feel about what we are doing? Um, so first question is, uh, do you think that it's for young people easier? And it's just a practical question, but essential. Um, it's easier for them to give feedback online than on paper. Is that something you? Well, le let me tell you what I experienced with offline safe space, because it is a social event and you want to have some evaluation after the offline event. And you, for example, you, you share a piece of paper with, with people. What happens is that people are not interested at all in evaluation at that moment. They want to talk to each other. They want to have some love, some discussion, etc. And the last thing that people want to do is fill in some kind of boring piece of paper. And, and we've experienced that if it's an online event, sometimes you even can send the evaluation uh, uh, in the last minute that it immediately mm -hmm. appears. It is very, it, you have a Maximum, we have at that very moment, not later on, but at that very moment, you have less distractions because you do not have the whole uh, audience of 30, 40 friends the way you haven't seen in a month. It's, it's no. you're just in your room and you get a mail, ping, all right, and, and you hear the moderator saying, Can you please, uh, uh, can everyone please have a quick look at the evaluation and just very quickly fill it in? That's like a very small gap, but it's a golden gap <laughs> as such. Mm -hmm. Now you can easily uh, uh, get evaluation, where in the offline event, you just shout, please don't forget, yes. and people are just like in a totally different yeah, yeah. way. Getting and their drinks and walking around and yeah. yeah. Trying yeah. to, you know, you, you, yeah. you, you're throwing pens over the whole uh, audience. <laughs> so everybody has it because, you know, sometimes you, you don't have 30 pens. These small things, uh, logistic wise, uh, and less distractions online in that very moment, uh, makes has made it for us easier online than, than offline. Mm. Okay, uh, I'll uh, I'll give the word to Vos because um, he wants to explain a bit more maybe about his question. Go ahead, Vos. Yeah, thanks, Hilde. Um, no, I just wanted to say that we we have a very different experience when doing events with a clinic. You know, because for example, we've done uh, sessions with uh, young people in in schools and colleges. And whenever we actually sent them, we did a physical workshop, yeah? Um, but then we didn't have time or we didn't want to do face-to-face -face feedback at the end of the session. So we said, okay, we're not gonna do that because it's not uh, time consuming and so on. And we sent them an email with a link to the evaluation for the physical event. Um, we didn't get responses at all, um, even though the teachers were pressing uh, for feedback uh, again and again, you know, with emails and reminders and, and, and so on. Uh, whereas when we actually handed out the forms at the end, yes, it was a little bit more time consuming and it needed some logistical kind of preparation in terms of having enough forms and enough pens or, you know, making sure that the people had pens on them or whatever. Um, but we also tried a hybrid kind of way. So we said, okay, you know, people that want to complete a, a paper form, here it is. Um, and if if you want to do it online, but within, you know, the space and the time of the physical event, um, here's a link uh, that, that you can go to and complete an online evaluation of that. So I was wondering, you know, yeah. what, what your thoughts might be on that, Yusuf. 
That's why I spoke vast of that very limited golden gap or limited space of, of time you have actually where you can make use of. So you're 100% correct in, in saying, for example, if you have an event, whether offline or online, and you send them an evaluation two to three days later, that evaluation is most likely not uh, going to happen or few people are going to take the time. But if you make if you make use for us in our experience, if you make use at the last aspect of your event, the last two minutes, and you send this communication and you immediately send them the, the evaluation as well, in that golden moment that you have, you have a moment where you have A, the, uh, the, the control, it's a, mm -hmm. a slight control, and the uh, attention as well. And there are very little things to, to take away their attention actually. And that has, has been an advantage, but it is, it has to be really that moment. You cannot say, okay, well, tomorrow we'll send you the evaluation and by next week, please send it back. That evaluation is in our experience is most likely not good. Yeah, it wouldn't work. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, yeah okay. thanks. Thank you. Uh, I would like to give the word back to Werner uh, um, to have uh, a talk with our audiences. Uh, and maybe Werner, um, you could start with one of the questions uh, in the chat. Uh, will online safe spaces be seen as part of the COVID era or are they here to stay? So, um, please, Werner, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Hilden. Uh, and uh, also thank you for um, um, giving the uh, divorce, uh, how do you say it, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in English. Um, Sorry, as, Werner, uh, could you put on your camera? Makes it more. Enjoy. I think my camera is on, no? You can see it. I can see you, Wendy. Yes. Ah, okay, nice. sorry. My okay. Thank you. Um, yes, the idea is that we saved all questions for, for uh, after the presentations, so that is what we are doing. But I see that Charlie uh, has uh, this question that Hilda just, uh, just mentioned. So, uh, will online safe spaces be just uh, part of COVID, uh, COVID area, or are we here to stay? I don't know, Charlie, if you want to uh, further elaborate on this uh, this question, um, I suppose it's for uh, also for Youssef and for the colleagues of um, Renewed, but um, maybe if you want to further elaborate, please go ahead. Sure, thanks, Ben. Uh, yeah, it was, it's just really that, it, it, in a sense, have we, have we been forced to create these online spaces because of the conditions in COVID? Um, and now those conditions hopefully are settling down are we going to be going back into a more physical meetings or because of the advantages that um Yousef outlined do we want to keep those as part of options going forward it's just uh, it's just a question that I was thinking about as we were going through but I, I'd appreciate pe people's views that are actually um running the safe spaces okay thank you um Yusuf, is this something you can um, can answer? Sure. I think as with everything uh, before and after the pandemic, we have learned the society that there are suddenly new tools at our uh, disposition uh, where that we can make use of. Um, that it's almost impossible to completely go back. It's the same with work, you know, working from home as uh, as working at the office, where people are now going back to working at the office, but they're saying, well, at least one day in a week, for example, I still work from home. I think you have learned that some time of two, uh, you have you possess now some tools in creating safe spaces. It's it it is almost impossible to to. To, to think as if they don't exist because they, they, they are there, they exist, those tools. And one of the easier uh, examples of, of, of online safe space is that what, what, what we sometimes try to do is create online safe spaces in, in the heat of the moment. There's something happening, there's something happening in the world, there's a conflict, Palestine, Israel, you name it. <coughs> and you immediately, uh, you know, youngsters are talking about it, a lot of polarization happening online. All right, let's create a, an event, an online event, because creating an offline event, you have to think of so many logistics, you have to hire the building and this and that, and I don't know what. Online is you create a flyer, you create a form and a link, and you're there. <coughs> Apologies. And I think that aspect of immediacy is so critical to the online safe spaces. Sorry. 
<coughs> I think I talked too much. <coughs> okay, so, Yusuf. Of immediacy. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm going to save your voice uh, a bit uh, for you. Uh, so I hear you say the idea of hybrid, uh, of hybrid uh, safe spaces is not that, uh, not that bad in the post-COVID uh, area. Um, Martin and Lamba, um, do you want to uh, add something on the um, the question here? Is it just a COVID thing, or is it here to stay? Uh, for me, it wasn't just a COVID thing, uh, <coughs> but um, of course, uh, like in a COVID-19 times where it was um, much worse, uh, you had um, more meetings uh, because I was, for uh, example, I, was, I wasn't going to school, so I had, a, had mo more time, but it it isn't just for uh, in the COVID era, it, it's... Uh, also for later, um, for example, I'm uh, what Martina said before. I'm organizing uh, organizing uh, with two other uh, people um, in Re uh, Revolt. We are organizing a debating uh, um, tournament, and that's um, yeah. That doesn't have it doesn't have to do anything with. Um, yeah, the online spaces, you can also uh, bring your idea up and uh, do something with that. This, it isn't just for the COVID times. Okay, thank you very much. Martin, do you want to say anything I saw? Um, well, I think I have to agree um, with Yusef partly on um, that we uh, created the online safe spaces um, in in a hurry, but the online world in uh, in youth um, already existed. And I think as uh, practitioners of, um, w uh, we uh, weren't there yet. Um, and now we were forced to take part in this new, well, uh, in this world uh, because of COVID. But I think um, we should, we, yeah. Uh, I think it will continue to exist and maybe um, in hybrid form, as Yusuf already said. I think it's a good combination um, uh, because uh, also, as uh, Lamba already said, there's a lot of uh, youngsters that already feel safer in online spaces than offline spaces. So I think a little bit of both uh, worlds will uh, will be necessary to continue. Okay. Wonderful, thank you. Charlie, does that uh, satisfy you as an answer or does it uh, frighten you as an answer? Um, no, I, th I think that's that's really useful. I think you, you can't put the, the genie back in the box once people are aware of the, the different options. It's just whether we um, retreat back a little bit more into online spaces. But as you say, I think it's just important to keep uh, there's so many advantages to it. I think it's important just to keep all the options. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. I don't see any more questions in the chat, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any other questions. So let me just um, give the floor to everybody who still has something to ask us. Um, to ask Yusuf, Martin, Lamba, uh, or anybody who wants to add something uh, to the to the discussion, um, something he or she hasn't heard yet, uh, please go ahead. I propose that you raise your little hand in the. As everybody knows how it works, I assume. Um, so that we don't start talking amongst each other. So please go ahead. Are there any other questions? No. Okay. And I think we really have to thank 
Youssef uh, from CPIRE who has certainly explained us in uh, very large detail how safe spaces um, work, how they work in an online context how they can work in an offline context also. Um, and the hybrid version who is here to stay, uh, if we want it or not, it will be here to stay. Um, and I also have to think uh, to thank uh, Martin and Landa, Lamba, I'm sorry, from uh, our uh, northern um, neighbors in uh, Holland, in the Netherlands, who have been doing a lot of great work um, they even um, um, made Hilde uh, say wow online in a recorded <laughs> webinar um, because it's really impressive the, the shift you are making in the, the debate um, uh, tournament it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, um, it is a tournament. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it can be something that we all can learn from um, uh, in the Orpheus project uh, and beyond that, because this really sets in the uh, the next step, uh, taking up responsibility, engage, learn your skills to express your emotion, feelings, frustrations, um, into arguments, um, into rational arguments, into debate, and uh, which is, of course, the essence of a demo democratic uh, <laughs> context in, in which we live, and in which you can uh, make uh, a change for yourself. So um, I have to congratulate you on this uh, event with 80 youngsters, 80, 90 youngsters even, so it's, uh, it's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hilde. Yes, back, back to, to you. You are yes. going to close um, uh, our webinar, if yes. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to um, maybe ask Katie to just show the PowerPoint again. Um, well, for the time being, it was really a pleasure eh? and, and, and a privilege really to uh, have this very interesting uh, webinar, uh, thought provoking webinar. Uh, I also want to take the opportunity to thank uh, Katie Mari for Lise Barents uh, and Carola Benamor. Uh, for coordination and uh, technical backup of this webinar. Uh, I'm going to our next webinar because there are still a few to go. Uh, the next upcoming Orpheus webinar will be on modern Islamic reform movements. Uh, the host will be their CPIA and it's on the 25th of November 2021. We don't have yet an hour, I think, but we will communicate it as soon as we know it. Okay, so yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, you can follow the uh, Orpheus activities. You can subscribe to an email, uh, to a newsletter by sending an email. Uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, you can write directly to me, or you can have a look at our website, will, which will be yeah, launched in the next week. Thank you for joining us and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Thank you very too. much. Bye-bye.